In this project, we're going to scan a hand-drawn image direct into CorelDRAW. We're then going to trace that image using Power Trace, convert it to a vector image, and then stylize the image to end up with something like this. And this really is a great example of the power of working with vector graphics. OK, I'm going to minimize this document as we can have many documents open in CorelDRAW at the same time. Up to the new icon and I'm going to call this Sketched Girl. We're very much going to go with defaults except we're going to change our page size. I'm going to go to Landscape and I want a page size of 450 millimeters wide by 250 millimeters tall. I only want one page and I want to stay inside of the CMYK color mode. CMYK is the color mode that is used for professional print and usually for your home connected printer CMYK is what you would choose. And again a rendering resolution of 300 dpi very much suits the professional print area and your home connected printer. However, if we were going to create graphics for the web or for, say, a large format banner, we might choose the RGB color mode. OK, well, let's just run with this. Click OK and create our document. And then we'll need to just maximize our document inside of Corel Draw, And we're ready to go. What we're going to do now is scan our image. So let's come up to File. And here in the File menu, we have an option called Acquire Image. Under Select Source, I have the ability to choose Twain compliant devices. So CorelDRAW supports Twain. You may have a number of different scanners attached. Simply choose the appropriate scanner. When you're ready to go, click Acquire, and that will open your scanning software, and you'll be ready to go. So let's do that. We'll click Acquire. Now for me, this is my scanning software that I installed with my scanner. So CorelDRAW has now activated this piece of software and I can go ahead and make my settings. Now it's a grayscale image, so for me I'm going to choose grayscale. Now your scanning software will most likely look different and you will have to familiarize yourself with your software. But once you've made your settings, click scan and your scanner will begin to scan and when it's finished, automatically your image will be imported direct into CorelDRAW. And you can hear mine scanning away in the background there. Now that my scanner has finished, the image is directly imported into CorelDRAW. It really is very quick and easy. Can you notice with my image selected on the property bar, Edit Bitmap is available? That's because scanned images are bitmap images. But of course, we want to convert this to a vector image. So I'm going to move this to the left-hand side, and then Control-C on my keyboard copies to the clipboard, and then Control-V pastes back down over the top. I now have a duplicate that I can move over to the right. Now with my duplicate selected, I'm going to come up to Trace Bitmap, Outline Trace, and I'm going to go with Clip Art. So click. Now Power Trace has detected that I've scanned at a very high resolution. Should you ever see this dialog box, it's simply saying, hey, it may be faster for you if I automatically uh, downsample this bitmap image, make it smaller, it will then trace quicker, and it will be easier for you to work with. I would simply suggest Click Reduce Bitmap. If you're not happy with the end result, you can always undo, come back, do it again, and choose Keep Original Size. But I'm going to choose Reduce Bitmap. So click. And immediately, Powertrace goes to work scanning the original image. So on the left, we have the original, and on the right is our final traced result. And doesn't that just look brilliant? OK, well, there's a few settings we can look at. First of all, here in the top right-hand corner, we have all of our default settings. We can choose those from within CorelDRAW when we start the scan. And an area you might want to spend some time with is the detail slider. If I move this to the left, the detail will become a lot less. But depending on where you move it, you can still create some rather usable, interesting results. And even that looks fantastic, doesn't it? Of course, the further to the right you go, the higher the level of detail will end up with. Another area to spend some time looking at are these settings here. The delete original image is something I personally always turn on. And really what it does is it just deletes the original scan. So when our trace is put back into Corel Draw, rather than the trace sitting back over the top of the original scan, the scan is gone. 
because you can actually get confused between the two. I've done that at times. All right, what we're going to do now is click Remove Background. If I select Remove Background, notice how all of the white in the background just automatically disappears. Power Trace determines what the background color is for you. However, if you want to choose your own color, simply select Specify Color, and then you can use this little eyedropper and click on the background. And sometimes you'll have varying backgrounds and it might be more suitable for you to select your own background. However, we still have a few little white areas in here. So the next thing I'm going to do is turn on Remove Color from Entire Image. So effectively, this color here has now been removed from the entire image. So now when we click OK, all we're going to be left with are the outlines. So let's click OK and automatically this will be placed back into Corel Draw. Now if I go ahead and select the rectangle tool and I'm just going to fill that with a nice light grey colour and then I'm going to send that to the bottom of the stacking order. So shift page down and can you see how my trace is see-through? And of course that's because it's simply vector lines versus my actual bitmap or scanned image is solid. It's not see-through, is it? So I just quickly wanted to highlight that for you. Okay. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is come up to Window, Dockers, and open the Object Manager. Now, the Object Manager allows us to place varying objects on different layers per page. So right now, we're on page one, and we've got one single layer. If I click the plus and open up the tree of that layer, you can see when I click here, that's my group of objects that make up my scan, and that's the bitmap. Well, I'm going to go ahead and add some additional layers. So down the bottom here on the New Layer icon, if I click 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I now have a total of six layers. I'm going to rename the layers. So the first layer, click once and then click again for renaming. Scanned image. The second layer, I'm going to call face outline. And I'm going to go ahead now and rename the rest of the layers. Now that I have all my layers are named, I'm going to select various areas of my image and group them together onto that layer. So Z on my keyboard selects my zoom tool, we'll zoom into the bottom half, and then space bar to go back to my pick tool. I'm going to select my group of objects and ungroup them all. Now normally to select a number of objects you would click and drag and draw a marquee around the objects you want to select. But in the case of this image, it is going to be very difficult using the rectangular shape to select objects. So we're going to use the new freehand pick tool. Now it's very important that you select a layer. So right now, the mouth layer is the active layer. We can see that because it's red in color. I'm simply going to click, draw a marquee around the objects I want to select. Once they're selected, if I click group, all of the objects will move from the scanned image layer, that's where all the curved objects are, and they'll group together on the active layer. Let's do that again, and this time we'll do it with the nose. So click and drag, draw a marquee around all the objects I wish to select, group together, and you'll see that they all come to the nose layer because that was the active layer. So the left eye, and group, and the right eye in through that little gap there. It really is very advantageous using the new freehand pick tool. And group together, and now we have all of our objects grouped together on various layers. Now F4 zooms back out to my object, and I want you to see now that we've taken all the components and added them to various layers, that selecting my outline or my face outline will be very easy. So I'll make that the active layer, and now what I'm going to do is simply turn off or hide each of the components that are within those layers. In fact, what I'm doing is I'm choosing to hide or show each of those layers. And now that I've done that, all I have to do is select what's remaining and then group that together. That automatically jumps to my face outline active layer and now watch this. I can turn the right eye on and I can turn just the nose on. And doesn't that in itself look tremendous? 
left eye? What if we turn the nose off and just have the eyes? But can you see the power of uh, setting aside the various components, grouping them together and placing them on particular layers?